Natasha. All right, Kelly Meyer, thank you for that report. I want to bring in Jamil Jaffer, founder and executive director of the National Security Institute. Jamil, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Natasha. Can you paint the picture for us, Jamil? How big of a concern is it that Russia would send these weapons to Iran to be reverse engineered? What are the implications? Well, you know, Natasha, as you pointed out, these aren't the first reports we're hearing. And you're not really hearing the State Department or Defense Department say that it's not happening. They're saying it's not a significant amount of diversion. They're saying the Ukrainians aren't diverting to the black market. But what we think is happening here is that the Russians themselves are giving the Iranians these weapons, allowing them to, uh, you know, remanufacture them to figure out what they're doing to and 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 make their own versions. The Iranians have done this before. They did it with the U.S. wire wire guided TOW tow missiles, uh, their anti tank missiles. They also did it with a U.S. made drone that they captured, uh, the RQ-170 Sentinel. So the Iranians know how to. Uh, steal U.S. technology and and rebuild it. Um, and the real concern here is they're going to do it with stingers, they're going to do it with javelins, which could affect their ability, uh, one, to defeat those weapons, but also to use them in a conflict in the Middle East, whether that's with Israel or with the United States directly. And I do want to ask about the javelin missiles specifically, known for melting Russian tanks. Does the rest of the world already have access to that technology uh, or not? And if it is reverse engineered, what are the implications there for that tech? Well, obviously, our adversaries don't have those capabilities quite yet. They have similar capabilities, but nothing quite as good as the Javelin. If the Iranians get this capability, it could be very deadly against Israeli Merkova tanks. It could be used against American M1 Abrams tanks if we got in a conflict with the Iranians. And the Iranians, who we already know are giving weaponry and selling weaponry to the Russians, including those so-called suicide drones, could proliferate those weapons throughout the Middle East, including to proxy groups they support like Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthi rebels in Yemen. You know, uh, we were looking at these reports, um, some of the sources saying that Russia believes that by continuing to provide these captured weapons to Iran, it incentivizes Iran to maintain its support for Russia's war. Uh, can you help us understand the, the context behind that statement? Sure. You know, any time you have an adversary, you want to be able to know what their weaponry capabilities are. You want to understand them. You want to be able to defeat them. And if you can build similar capable weapons, you want to be able to do that as well. And since Iran views the U.S. as a significant adversary, the Russians giving them weapons incentivizes them to stay on the Russian side, provide the Russians with the artillery, the ammo and the drones that they need. And they're probably looking for something for the Russians, too. They're looking for fight advanced fighter jets. They're looking for helicopters. And they're looking for advanced surface-to-air missile defense systems like the S-300 and S-400 systems uh, that countries like Turkey, uh, a NATO ally, have actually bought from the Russians. All right, Jamil Jaffer, always appreciate your time. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Natasha.